Welcome to Craft D&D, and this week we're going to pitch a tent. On this episode of Craft D&D, you'll need twine, sticks, ruler, hot glue, parchment paper, and a bit of tape. To start off, I'm going to be making the fabric for the walls of the tent. And how I do that is I simply take and unwind quite a bit of that twine from the spool. Now the twine I just picked up at a big box store or hardware store or someplace. It's not very expensive. It's just a couple of dollars for a pretty big uh, spool of it. And I've used quite a bit. I've made uh, several of these tents and a few other projects with the twine. So one of the nice things about these tents is you can kind of customize how they look. For example, the tent you see there that I had already done, that's kind of a little bit nicer material tent. Maybe it's the uh, wizard might have that one, or a noble, somebody with a noble background might have that one. The tent I'm going to do here is going to be a little bit more of a put-together type tent. Maybe they've been camping in it a long time. If they're in the jungles of Chult, maybe they've been out from Port Nianzaru or any kind of civilization for several weeks and the tents are starting to maybe fall apart a little bit. Uh, so whereas that one that you see there in the video that I made previously is in a nice um, shape, the one I'm going to make now is going to be a little bit more, that it's been a little more dilapidated, we'll uh, say. So to start the process here, I just take and tape a little bit of the, uh, the end of the twine there just to the ruler. And that's just to just to make it easy to to hold it in place, and then just start wrapping it around, around and around and around. Um, kind of want to keep it pretty tight. You can get a little bit sloppy, and then tighten it up um, at three or four turns, and then uh, you'll see I do that here, and then I'll kind of push it up all together, and then tug it a little bit, to try to get a little bit tighter. But the more careful you are here, the more tight the tent is going to be and the more fancier that nobleman's tent um, the, if you make it nice and taut at, at this stage. And because I'm going for more of a, like I said, a tent that's been out there used and abused or maybe the uh, they couldn't afford the nice tent, they had to settle and and get the uh, already used tent or the, the uh, cheaper tent. So on this uh, video, I'm actually going to demonstrate the um, a little bit more sloppy tent, we'll, uh, we'll uh, call it here. And I'll just take a couple more seconds here to finish spinning this around and kind of getting everything ready to go. One thing you will notice is I kind of spin and spin this ruler. Um, it's going to get tighter and tighter on that ruler. And it's going to get harder and harder to pull off. So the more um, twine you put on the ruler, the harder it is to get off the ruler later. So keep that in mind. You might want to do this in smaller chunks. And try, and as like I said, try to make it tight, but don't make it so tight that you can't take it off. And then what I'm doing here, I'm actually trying to push everything together and get all of the uh, sections just, just as close together as I can. Um, that way the uh, weave of the fabric, so to speak, is uh, is as nice as it, as it can be. And there my one end just kind of came off. That's no big deal. Just tape it back on. If it does that, it may do that. You don't want it to be on there forever, so it's a very temporary measure, that piece of tape. And once you kind of get everything situated how you want it, then just go ahead and take your hot glue gun. And obviously get it nice and hot for this stage. You don't want it to be at all, you know, you don't want it to be just a little bit cool. You want it to be super hot so that that glue will actually ooze into and in between the strings. So you, so just uh, turn the ruler onto one of its edges, not the flat, but the edge piece. And then just uh, start applying some hot glue. And you're going to want to be a little bit sloppy here. You're going to want a little bit extra glue. And you want to want the glue to flow down the sides a little bit. And here I'm actually just taking the tip of it and rubbing it up and down, trying to work some of that hot glue into the strings, between the strings, and really kind of get them together so they all stick together nicely. And after that, it's a simple matter of pushing the uh, fabric off of the ruler. Like I said, it's a little bit of a hard process if you've gone too tight. Um, you can also, if you want to make it a really nice and tight fabric, do both edges, not just the one edge like I did, but turn it over and do the other edge as well. And that will give you a really nice 
tight and really easy to work with piece of uh, piece of uh, twine fabric. Uh, here it came apart on me a little bit, so I'm just kind of patching that up with the uh, hot glue gun in, uh, again. And just kind of getting it into place there so that it'll hold together because inevitably it won't stick to whatever you want it to, whatever I want it to anyway. It'll stick to whatever it wants to. So you just kind of get a little bit of extra glue in there and try to melt that all back into place and melt that back together. If I knew that's exactly where I wanted to cut it apart at, I could just leave it, but I don't think that's exactly where I want it to cut apart at. Because I'm actually going to use about half of it for one side of the tent and half of this for the other side of the tent. And there'll probably be a little bit left over. But uh, it's, yeah, we'll just kind of hold it there a little bit, try to get it to dry, try to get everything to make sure everything's good and settled. And then when you're satisfied that you've got it how you want it, just uh, trim off any excess edges. Like here, I'm going to trim this little bit of a tail off. And my scissors could be a little bit sharper because I take several times to trim it. And it used to be a nice pair of scissors, but it's been kind of used and abused. Then the same thing with the other side, just kind of trim off the little excess there might be. And I could have taken the time and re-glued that, but I know I'm not going to need that much. So I just dispose of that little bit of extra that I have there. So now, once again, just kind of making sure everything is uh, not going to fall apart on me. And I'm going to go ahead and flip it over the side that I did not glue. And go ahead and see, this is the side that I glued. And this is the side that I did not glue. And I'm going to go ahead and stick, stick my scissors right in there. And go ahead and cut that all the way up. Trying to get every little circle. And I got that off camera a little bit, but... You just want to go ahead and just keep cutting them right up, cutting them right on that edge that you did not glue. So as you can see there, you can kind of see what I did. And just, I did that all the way up, just cutting it on that edge I didn't glue. And as you can see there, the edge that I glued is still there. It's still a seam holding it all together. Now the next step, I'm going to go ahead and try to flatten this out a little bit. Um, first I'll kind of... Uh, fold it with my fingers and then I'll use the hot glue gun but uh, put down the parchment paper first and this is a parchment paper or baking paper one sheet will last a long time I've used this one sheet for several different crafts as you can see there's a bit of paint on it and um, but uh, the nice thing about this is hot glue just does not stick to it whatsoever so you can lay it right on there and kind of push that glue gun right into the glue. You can put hot glue on it and that glue will not stick to it. Um, it'll just stay, uh, even if it, once it dries, you can just pick it, uh, peel it right off. It's uh, very easy. So here, once again, I am just working on getting this uh, piece of fabric flat um, because obviously when it was wrapped around the ruler, it had a it had a curve to it, and that's how it dried, but I don't want to keep that curve. I want that to, to be flat because I'm going to, like I said before, one side of this is going to be one side of the tent, and the other side is the other side of the tent. And there I just happened to find a couple of uh, pieces there that I didn't get cut when I went through and cut it apart last time. So I'm just uh, trimming those or getting those cut apart like they should have been when the first time I cut them. And then now uh, just continuing the process here, getting it uh, melted up a little bit, working on flattening out that piece of uh, tent material. Uh, the trick here, of course, is not to get it so hot or so heated up that, the, that it uh, begins to separate and fall apart. So just kind of keep working out a little bit. You may have to go back and forth a couple of times before you finally get it um, nice and flat. And you do really want to get it as flat as you possibly can. Now, if you have it, uh, had it the um, glue seam on both sides, the glue seams would actually be at the top and the bottom in this scenario and not running down the middle. So you wouldn't have those fringes at the top and the bottom and it would be held together real nice and tight by those glue seams. Um, another thing you can do is make the one glue seam really big and then cut along the glue seam, which will give you the same effect of having a real nice and tight um, 
blue seam. Like I said, for this tent, I wanted to do kind of more of a, it's been out there in the jungles for a while. That tent's been dilapidated. I know when I ran Chult at my table, uh, several times uh, they would have encounters. Zombies would come in or something else, and they would not They would kind of get themselves led away from the tents a little bit, and something else might come in and uh, start to scavenge in their tents and so forth. So instead of looking like a nice... Uh, pretty tent like that like it probably did when it left port nine zaru instead it started to look they would have started to look pretty dilapidated as they started to put tents together and patch tents and so forth so here i'm just kind of measuring the uh, width that i need um, and this is kind of an eyeball type thing it doesn't have to be an exact measurement uh, pretty much the your minis will be able to like small minis will be able to stand up inside of it when you're done and larger minis you could lay down inside of it so which is pretty much what you do in a tent anyway most people don't stand up in 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 their tent unless it's a really massive tent when they go camping so so the shorter piece was the one I kind of measured up against the tent the uh, tent I already had and that's about two and a half inches um, to but, between two and three inches works pretty good. That way you could put one mini in there. If you want to simulate it for two minis, you can make it closer to three inches and kind of stick both minis in there if you have a couple of uh, characters that are sharing a tent or something. As you can see, I've got it pretty much how I want there. The uh, edges are all frayed, so you're going to have some holes in the tent. So I'm just taking a piece of cardstock here, and this is just part of a cereal box that I cut up. So you could use any kind of a food box or whatever that you might have. Just don't throw it away and keep a keep one or two, and then you'll be able to use this process. Um, you can see here that I make a mistake. Um, I put the glue seam to the outside. I intended to put the glue seam to the inside here. But uh, I didn't notice until I was basically done and I wasn't going to take it apart or start over at that point. So, But just for aesthetics, you probably would want to put that glue seam to the inside and not the outside like I end up doing on one of these two pieces here. And all I'm really doing here is just kind of uh, taking a look, seeing how it's going to fit onto the piece of cardboard. Um, the piece of cardboard is, it's, again, it's about two by three inches and you can trim it down more once you're done. It doesn't need to be. You can start with the bigger piece and then clean it up later. Um, now I'm going to go ahead here and make the tops of the tent. And so I'm just, so I guess once again, just taking a popsicle stick and putting some marks on it the same width as the actual fabric and then trimming off the excess. I find a wire cutter works really well for this. I know I've seen some videos, the uh, DMG, for example, uses a scissors. I've tried to use a scissors and that's probably why my scissors is all dull because it just doesn't work for me, but a wire cutter works great. So pretty much I'm just uh, making sure that it's how I want it uh, when I get started. So what I'll do is I'll basically just yeah, and then I'm going to actually do that little ridge up on top, except for in this case, I'm actually going to hide that ridge because I don't want that harsh line up there. So I'm just kind of holding the fabric down with my popsicle stick for now and putting my line of hot glue on where I'm going to be moving the popsicle stick to momentarily, um, which right now I'm just holding the fabric in place with it. And... Then I just uh, move it right up on to, or onto the glue and push that into place and hold it there. And then I just kind of hold it there for a little bit. It doesn't take too long and it's ready to pick off some of the excess. And, and you can see all of that uh, hot glue threads everywhere. Um, thankfully, it doesn't just doesn't hurt too badly, but uh, you definitely want to let it cool a little bit before you get too crazy with putting on the hot glue like that and then I pick it back up and I continue to work at it and you can see I was able to lay it right on that parchment it didn't stick which was awesome because it had that been on the yellow paper or a wax paper or something like that it would have stuck to it and then I would have been fighting to try to get that paper off and that parchment paper works real real great I don't worry about turning it the project over and putting the the glue straight down onto it because I know it's not going to stick 
Here I'm just adding a little bit more spots of uh, glue um, just for to give it some more strength there because I'm this is going to be the top of it so I don't want it to just fall apart or when people are moving it around the table or whatnot having it start to disintegrate in their fingers. And then I, once I get that all situated how I want it I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing for the other side. And then I'll have two pieces exactly like this with... Uh, with the two sides and the uh, popsicle stick uh, glued for the down for the top. And as you can see here, I have finished up that second piece, and I'm just going to go ahead and test fit them together. And I, my goal here is to really hide that popsicle stick ridge line that uh, you can see on the other tent because I really didn't like that how that turned out like that. So I kind of worked the two together and I made sure to leave some excess on both sides too. And then I'm just uh, putting the glue down on the fabric between the two sticks. And then I'm just going to fold them together so that the sticks will kind of glue together at a, eh, about a 45 degree angle or so. Um, just, uh, just enough to give it a nice peak and then it'll hold together. And that kind of takes a little bit of time here to get that situated exactly how I wanted it. It's like I said before, these tents are not, um, they're not scientific. You don't really even, other than to make the fabric, you don't even really need a ruler. You pretty much just, uh, just put it together until it looks good, until it looks like how you want it to look. Um, and of course you get uh, hot glue all over yourself with the hot glue. I would use PVA glue, but the dry times would be um, quite long here with this uh, twine. So it's just a little bit faster and easier to use the hot glue sometimes. So here I'm basically pinching the, to the uh, twine from both sides together. And uh, then I'll just take and smooth that a little bit and try to make that uh, flow into the twine there with the, with the tip of the, of the glue gun. That way it's not quite so obvious that there's uh, glue up there. And that's also a nice thing about that clear glue is it's going to dry clear and you won't see it. You won't see it quite as much as you would the uh, yellow glue that I was using before. So I would really highly recommend getting the clear glue over the yellow glue. Um, and basically we're at the point where we just need to attach it to the base. Like I said, this is something we kind of put together before. It's about two by three inches. Uh, the actual tent itself, the uh, how it wants to fall onto it will dictate your measurement a little bit. Uh, make it a little bit bigger than you need, especially for like your first one, because you can always trim that down. It's just cardboard, so that's no, no big deal to uh, trim down a little bit. And so I just put a line of hot glue on it and set the edge of my tent right into that hot glue. Now I could have done a um, popsicle stick line like I did at the tops down at the bottom to make it uh, attach a little bit easier or quicker, but I think this looks a little bit more um, rugged, like that tent's been a little bit more abused and beaten up, which once again is what I was going for. So, And then I just attach the other side, and essentially at this point we're done. As soon as this other side is attached and glued down, uh, if you wanted to, you could glue or you could paint that base. I wouldn't paint it first because the hot glue wasn't going to want to stick to it very well. But uh, once it's uh, in in place and uh, glued glued down pretty good, like you can see right here, it's still sticking to my fingers, which is why we use the parchment paper so it doesn't stick to everything else as well. And but uh, just kind of just some cleanup at this point. Uh, go around, make sure all the strings are actually stuck down. A little bit more glue or a little bit more heat as necessary uh, to kind of do, add some extra fill, some extra strength here and there where it's needed. Um, you're just, yeah, it's pretty uh, a pretty basic procedure, a pretty pretty basic build once you get into it, and you can kind of customize each tent. Like I said, the first ones I did, they were a lot a lot nicer tents. They were you know the fabric, there was no holes in them. Um, and for this tent here, I definitely wanted to demonstrate that tent after it's been out in the jungles of Chult for a while and it's been really abused and it's had zombies run through it and it's just had, it's had a lot of abuse and a lot of use and uh, probably had a couple of tents actually put together as the player characters may have lost part of one to fire or 
lost, you know, one of them got a tree fallen on them or, or you know, whatever other events may have happened to their tents while they were out. Um, and just kind of at this point, just kind of continuing to work that those strands down. Um, here I was going for maybe it's kind of showing that uh, the tent flap was open, and I'm going to add the uh, and I'm going to add the extra piece that I had cut off earlier to one of these sides here, and that's just to kind of give the impression that the tent flap might be open, or maybe it's just a patch that the uh, characters had been forced to patch their tent with part of another tent in order to make it a whole tent. Um, but uh, just kind of continuing to go along here and adding a little bit more glue, a little bit more heat, and making sure those pieces of twine are really stuck down to the cereal box because I don't want them, like I said, falling off during play because it says for play at a table. Um, you could have a player move it, put their PC into it, you know, put their mini into it, um, and so forth. So you definitely want to make it that it's durable. It's not really a show piece or a custom piece. It's not designed to sit on a shelf. It's actually designed to be used on the table during actual gaming play. Um, at this point, like I said, you could add, or at this point, you could um, paint the base, and you could paint the uh, base black or green or a brown. I went ahead and just left it uh, cardboard colored for now because I wasn't just sure exactly what color I wanted to paint it. And I may add a little bit of paint later. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and just leave it that cardboard color because I'm probably going to add some sleeping mats or something in there anyway, so I don't need to put a lot of paint in there if I'm adding the gluing in some sleeping mats and so forth. And here you can see I am just adding a little bit more fabric. Maybe it's to simulate, you know, the tent flap is open. Maybe it's a patch. Yeah, kind of whatever your imagination tells you it is, that's probably what it is. And of course, you can see on that one side there that I accidentally flipped my piece of material over. That glue line should be on the inside of the tent and not the outside of the tent. But at this point, this is when actually when I noticed it, I wasn't going to, you know, take it all apart and put it back together. Um, instead, I just continue to work at it, kind of puff it out. I'm really glad that I got rid of that ridge line on top because I did not like that look of that ridge line up on top. Um, and then so I just continue to add a little bit more hot glue here and there and to get everything settled and just to continue to make sure that it's able to be handled at the table and make sure that when somebody picks it up and moves it, it's just not going to fall apart on them. Like I said, this is, you know, these are designed for, for a play at the table and they're not designed to sit on a shelf and look pretty. Uh, none of my crafts are designed to sit on a shelf and look pretty. Um, Next thing I'm going to go ahead and add is those little tent pegs down there, which kind of gives it a finishing touch or an idea that this is a tent and not just a bunch of twine on, on the uh, table. Um, kind of helps to sell the illusion, I guess. So I just cut off four matchsticks, or I take a matchstick and cut four chunks off of it. Um, Make them a little bit bigger, make them, you know, cartoonish size because you want to be able to see them, otherwise you wouldn't bother putting them down. And just a dab of glue and stick it in there, hold it for just a little couple of seconds so that it'll start holding. And then just do that on each of the four corners and then come back around and kind of make sure everything's still standing up when you're done because the... Sticks have a tendency to start to fall over after a while, even though that, you know, they're in that glue, which should be drying pretty quickly. But it's uh, really all there is to it. And you just, uh, like I said, continue and adding more or adding the rest of the sticks on the other four on the other sides. And really, really wishing I had left that glue line out because I really don't like the look of that. But... I love the fact that the ridge line's covered, so I'll have to contend myself with that. 
So yeah, and just uh, make sure your sticks are kind of where you want them. If they do happen to fall over and you don't notice them, you can always take the glue gun, remelt the glue, and stand them back up. So that's not a big deal. And here I'm just kind of cleaning off some of those extra bits of uh, glue that um, inevitably get everywhere. Um, I think on the other tent, I had actually whittled the sticks down a little bit too to give them a more rounded shape. Uh, you absolutely could do that, or just leave them a square. Um, either one would be an authentic tent peg. Either you know, round it out like a uh, like a stick you were gonna go kill a vampire with, or leave them more as a square. And here I'm just gonna show the uh, minis do fit inside of it. I have a uh, wizard cat tabaxi type mini there, and I and then I have a knight mini, and they both fit inside of it. Um, the tabaxi would be, um, this actually can stand up in there, and the knight or the fighter has to kind of crawl inside, but norm normally in a tent you would be laying in there anyway. So you could have your party set up their tents, put their minis where they're at, roll for the random encounter, and you know, the zombies come, and then they have to you know spend part of their movement getting out of the tent, maybe part of their movement trying to put on, you know, grab your shield, grab a weapon, so forth. So it really adds to the kind of the excitement during play. I really hope you enjoyed my video, um, and I hope to see you next time. Remember to share, like, and subscribe. Thank you.